Yeah, it's time for Category 5 TV. Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Hey, welcome to episode number 186, Category 5 Technology TV. Everybody. <laughs> I was going to play on. Nice to see everybody in the chat room. Yeah. We've had a fun week, haven't we? It's been lots Just of fun. Kicking yeah. Things off. <laughs> yeah. Had everybody here. Everybody's clapping in the chat room. Thank you. Thank you. We are crazy <laughs> around here, people. Uh, episode number 186 marks the sixth episode of our uh, web development series. Check out cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, we've got lots, uh, lots to cover tonight. We're going to be looking at uh, finishing off the uh, the kind of the, the main layout of that website, and then we're going to be moving on to coding it in uh, PHP, which is an exciting time because then we're going to be getting on to uh, some even more fun stuff. Everything's fun. Yeah. Somebody's mentioning that my mic is having some trouble here, so I'll just double check here. It is indeed on. Check check. Okay, it just means they get to hey, listen to me tonight. You get to listen to her. Dun, Check. Dun. There we go. I think it <laughs> might have been a loose connection. I jiggled the wire. When in doubt, jiggle the wire. Hopefully mm -hmm. that's uh, not going to be a problem throughout the show. Cool. Nice to see everybody joining us in the chat room. Uh, if this is your first time here, uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, it's nice to see you even if you've been here a lot of times. Uh, but certainly it's nice to have uh, some new viewers tonight. Uh, do uh, you know once you've watched the show a couple times get onto our website category 5.tv and uh, click on interact and you'll see the viewer testimonials there where you can tell us what you think about the show uh, we'd love to be able to uh, get those and tell our viewers what you think cool all right we've got so much to cover tonight uh, yeah I'm kind of watching the chat room there and, and seeing what's going on I've got uh, uh, Eric is uh, off tonight, and uh, actually Becca is filling in in the uh, in the newsroom, and so uh, we'll just find out what's uh, what's coming up in the news as well. 
Coming up in the newsroom, free Ubuntu CDs will no longer be shipping from Canonical. Virgin Oceanic Planes to dive to the deepest points in the oceans. Today we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first human in space. And did you know that with every photo you upload or share from your smartphone, you could be sharing hidden private information which you'd rather be kept secret? I'll tell you all about it. So stick around and these stories are coming up in about 30 minutes. Thanks, Becca. Uh, yeah, all right. So I've got some viewer questions here that I'm going to cover. Uh, let's see. Certain things off. I've got uh, an email here from 2Redline who says, uh, I've got two items that I'd like to know more about. Number one, how do I set up a Windows 7 box to be able to receive Clonezilla images over a home network? I tried installing the SSH server and could not connect. Uh, looking for the simplest setup. Uh, on your Windows system, you've got, uh, you've got built-in uh, network sharing. So if you create a folder, uh, you can actually right-click on that folder and uh, you'll have the ability to uh, go Properties and then you'll see a tab on the Properties tab. And I don't have a Windows 7 system that I can show you, uh, but on that tab you'll see a Sharing tab uh, in Properties. From there you can share that folder and that's going to show you actually the network path to that computer right in, uh, in that dialog. So, uh, so then from your uh, Clonezilla system, uh, you remember how, how we did that uh, in a previous episode of the show. Uh, you can refer back to that. I'll put a link to it in the show notes for episode number 186. And then you'll be able to, uh, to see how that's done as well. So, uh, but basically, the sharing is already built in. Uh, you don't need to install anything. You don't need to install SSH in order to do that. Uh, however, Windows 7 does have some interesting firewall um, rules which may need uh, circumvention and uh, we can uh, find out more about that if you run into some trouble. Um, sometimes what you have to do is, uh, is work around uh, the Windows firewall by setting up exceptions. Um, that could be uh, something that could be a problem. If you're, if you're working ex exclusively within an internal network and you don't have uh, outside access coming in, then you could disable that Windows 7 firewall. Uh, because you're protected behind your NAT router uh, as well. So, and then you can just re-enable it when you're done doing your, uh, your image. Depends on the scenario. Let us know. Uh, and I'd love to uh, carry on with that and, and see. But uh, that's, that's really basic networking as far as setting up sharing as well. So, uh, Part two of the question. Let's see. How do I connect via a mapped drive? Example, my drive F on a Windows 7 over to my free NAS. Uh, FreeNAS is running fine, just uh, connectivity to access it from Windows is an issue. It shouldn't be a problem in that um, if you know the IP address of your FreeNAS box, it's, it needs to be a static IP, otherwise you reboot, it could get a new IP address from your router uh, or wherever your DHCP server is. So if you, you need to set your FreeNAS box as a static IP and then from your Windows machine, um, when you go to map the drive, you go slash slash, um, and that's uh, top left, bottom right, slash slash, uh, the IP address, slash, and then the share in order to mount that. Um, so, but uh, yeah, let us know if that helps. It's kind of like it's <laughs> well, it's it, it's networking kind of 101, right? So you could maybe even see we could see if there's a like a Windows 7 networking tutorial or something on the Microsoft website uh, would probably be a good place to check. I'll just do a quick search and then if there is something then I can uh, I could throw a uh, like a link in the in the show notes. It's going to be quite a bit. But uh, try a search for just uh, I'm, I'm searching for Windows 7 network sharing and coming up with a whole bunch of stuff, including Microsoft links. Uh, and the reason I suggest that is because it's just, it's really, you know, it's just understanding, you need to understand IP addresses. If you already understand that, then um, Samba and, uh, and network sharing over Windows. But it's as simple as just right clicking on that folder and clicking on properties and then sharing. Sorry, your audio is in it. I've been asked to smack you. Is it and really? it's tempting. It is so tempting, but. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> As he walks off the set, yeah. she's about to hit me. Just insulted him, and now it's oh. the Krista show. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's nice to see you. 
All right, let's trash that. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. Hello. Yes. Yes. You're back. I'm back. He's back. <laughs> back. She was smirking at me for something. I just figured it was just because that's what she does. <laughs> mm. uh, well, someone asked me to. I don't know. You can't really say no to viewers. <laughs> <laughs> viewers always right. <laughs> In polite. <laughs> Okay, so I hope you caught all that. Next question, coming from Max999. How do you record your show? I want to know. We use a, uh, an application called Wirecast. It's from Telestream. You can find out more at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And uh, we also use that to broadcast the show, uh, to switch around the camera angles, to add these fancy little footer graphics. Basically everything that you see on the show is is powered by Wirecast. Cat5.tv slash Wirecast. We have a uh, copy that we're going to be giving away and uh, we're coming up on your last chance, your final chance to vote for um, the one that you would like to see, the person that you would like to see win that software. Go to cat5.tv slash win short for win not windows. It's win like win a prize. Currently, our leading entry is entry number two, who says, now understand that the way that we're giving this away is uh, people submitted their, uh, their comments about why they think they should win Wirecast. <laughs> and here so far is the winning entry, and you can vote for your favorite. Although I have only used the demo version of Wirecast and not with multiple cameras, I have become a fan of Wirecast. After spending hours pouring through forums and comments, I can't find a better program for switching live video. I also appreciate the tech support that this uh, product provides. Uh, Telestream keeps improving Wirecast, and I understand the newest upgrade is free for current users. They are a company that cares about making a great product, and I appreciate the thought uh, that has been put forth in making Wirecast. Every time I research more, I am amazed by all that can be done with it. I am anxiously awaiting the day when I can produce a live stream with it. I am looking to use Wirecast for webcasting, uh, the local church's service. I plan on running three cameras and the desktop presenter. Uh, based on all of the reviews and support provided by Telestream, Wirecast should have no problem with the four streams. The aspect that sold me on Wirecast, though, is that it uh, is a three-in-one program. It can mix live video, it can stream different quality streams, and record to the hard drive all simultaneously. This keeps me from running more programs and less manpower running the software. Wirecast would suit me perfectly and be put to good use week after week. So that is our winning entry, entry number two so far. But you've got your chance to also get into cat5.tv slash win and uh, you'll be able to cast your ballot and, uh, and see uh, who's going to actually win that software. But everything that is said there is true. Uh, it's fantastic and, and for you, um, this is the desktop presenter which allows us to stream our desktop. Imagine, say, in a church environment, how handy that could be for so many different reasons, uh, posting lyrics and things like that, switching to, from camera to camera, and doing the captions and things, putting verses at the bottom and references. How cool is that? All this <laughs> stuff is all done through Wirecast. So definitely, I think Very that's a good cool. use for it, for sure. And uh, the other thing about, you mentioned about Telestream being uh, really supportive of their community. I also appreciate that they're supportive of their staff. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said about uh, about working for a good company. and. From all that I've heard, um, knowing some of the people at Telestream, um, they're they're really good to their people, and I think that that uh, also kind of puts them up. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just like if you treat your people well and uh, and care about the people who work for you, then of course they're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna get. Yeah, it usually support. shows in the end. Yeah. Yeah, really. So the yeah, end user absolutely. benefits from that for sure. All right, I guess I could put this on my belt. <laughs> there we go. You guys can hear me now. Great. Lucky. Yeah, you know. <laughs> check, 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 check. It's a little quiet. There we go. It's a little bit better. All right. We miss Eric, but uh, we appreciate the use of his microphone. <laughs> There's a reason why he's not here. That's that meant for it to not. Would be the reason. Yeah. All right. So we're going to jump right into our uh, web development series. This is uh, number six, which you'll be able to get over to cat5.tv slash webdev. 
And uh, from that website, you'll see uh, we've got a, a very exciting announcement to make in that if you are looking for web hosting, um, so you need a place to actually put your uh, website, uh, cool thing is we've got, uh, we've got a hosting company that is uh, partnering with Category 5 to provide you with the best possible deal. We have one year of web hosting, a free domain registration, so that's like your, your own .com. Uh, you've got uh, a two-week trial and uh, everything, so a year hosting, free domain registration, all that uh, for $70 US. Wow. So pretty fantastic. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, what you can do is go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost and uh, use the coupon code cat5tv. It's all uppercase and that information is also at the top of the page uh, of the web development series, cat5.tv slash webdev. That coupon, as far as I understand it, is never going to expire. So you can use that. <laughs> as as far as I understand it, for the longevity of this uh, this series, it should uh, it should still work for you. So even if you're watching this in 2014, <laughs> deep into the future, you should be able to use that ca coupon yeah. code. All uppercase cat5.tv, and it's cat5.tv slash dreamhost, and that'll get you there. All right, so that is the uh, hosting package we've got set up for you. In the meantime, get over to that website, cat5.tv slash webdev, in order to download this week's files. We are starting off with uh, episode 185's files. So that is uh, our image files and our index.php, all that stuff. So I'm going to load up everything that I need to get started, and Krista's loading up her stuff as well. And we're going to see what we can do with this here website. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. Krista's joining us again tonight. Hello. We are proceeding with uh, developing a website right from scratch, and we're going to see this thing right to the end. And uh, we're going to see that uh, exactly you know, how we can create this website right through all the way to uh, search engine optimization and submission. We're going to cover that at the end of the series as well. Um, so all very cool. important stuff. And uh, I, I'm happy to hear that a, a lot of people are getting a lot out of the series as well. Oh, good. Uh, I get a lot of email and uh, uh, Jot is, uh, is thrilled. Want more naps? Is, that, <laughs> is he napping But now? Uh, for the most part, I mean, uh, a lot of people are really getting a lot from the series and, uh, and understanding that, you know, sometimes there, it's necessary to do a multi-part series in order to really accomplish what we're setting out to do. And at the end of this, uh, we'll be moving on to, uh, to other uh, tutorials and lessons as well. Uh, but we're trying to keep our focus for the next uh, few weeks at least and uh, be able to work right through this for you. So I've got my files up here. Krista, uh, you've got your files up? Oh, I do. Oh, oh. you oh. told me to disconnect. This is your fault. I know. I'm just playing. I'll That's your Mac. There it is. There we okay. go. Perfect. Okay, so we've got uh, Wirecast uh, remote desk, uh, remote, uh, or pardon me, desktop presenter. <laughs> <laughs> running on my Linux computer there, right? And then it's running over on the Mac over here. You can see how versatile it is, uh, just because we were just previously talking about Wirecast. Uh, okay, so we left off last week at uh, demo.cat5.tv slash 003. Our website currently looks like this. So we've just placed this image here, the wood grain. And we're getting, uh, we're getting rocking on the actual layout of our website. So, back at our code here. Let's bring up our style.css. We've got lots of people following along. If you haven't yet got the files, uh, you can grab those from cat5.tv slash webdev, and you'll be able to actually follow along with us live uh, and ask your questions in the chat room at category5.tv. This is my style sheet, and this is my actual website. So let's find where we left off here. We've got the wood grain in our header area. Okay. Let's bring up our mock-up so we can see where we're going. There we are. Okay. So we've got uh, We Make Great Things Happen that's got to go over top of that wood grain and we've got Aspire to Be Great, a uh, little bit of 
a photo kind of thing going on there. So a couple of things that we're going to need to do. Uh, we need to have, we've talked about floats in a previous episode. Um, we're going to have items that are floating left, which is going to be our text. We're going to have items that are floating right, which is going to be the image there. So over here, I'm going to create a new Let's go back here and go to our header element here where we've got just a non-breaking space. And I'll just put in here, for example, um, I'm just going to put the word hello, which is just a test, test text so that we can actually see where that's going to lie. Now, we know that that's going to be in the top left corner of that element. Um, let's get connected over to our demo server here and get that uploaded. So demo.cat5.tv slash 004 is going to be our folder, our working folder for tonight. I noticed in the chat room um, last week, Krista, uh, some people were mentioning, well, why don't you just work on it live on the, on the server and then just it will automatically update. And I should yeah. just clarify, normally that's, that is one of the ways that I would work, but I want to make, I want to make this mm -hmm. so that people understand the relation between our files, the FTP site, the web host, yeah, everything versus, that you have to do in the background. Yeah, yeah, because if I'm just opening it remotely, for those of you who know what that means, uh, whether it be through SSH or just uh, through an FTP client that can mount the drive, um, the next person who's trying this tutorial may not be able to do that. And so we want to keep this as universal as possible. Um, those who have access to be able to do something like that know how to do it, and they can follow along in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want to restrict uh, this to those those people we want to keep it as open as possible so that's kind of my thinking so now on our website which is demo.cat5.tv slash 004 you see on the wood grain we have black text that says hello so we know that if we put our text in there what was it that uh, your clever wording oh, we I make great things happen let's do it all right <laughs> you remember what font that was uh, that one is Josephine uh, Slab, I think, and I is think it's from safe? Google it Google? Fonts API. Okay. So we need to understand what a web safe font is versus any font on your system. As you go through, you know, if you're using your graphic editor or your word processor, you'll see that you've got possibly hundreds of different fonts to choose from. But not all of those fonts, and in fact, very few of those fonts are going to be what's called web safe. That means that. Basically, if you put it on your website, it's going to appear the same for every person's computer. Mm -hmm. Reason for that is they may have come with other applications. They may be operating system specific. They may be um, non-free. You know, so you may you may not be able to get them uh, cross-platform. If you use Linux, you may not have them on uh, on Linux. And, and similarly, if you've got some open fonts on Linux, they may not come with Windows. Mm -hmm. So it becomes this mess. So if you if you don't know what are web safe fonts and what ones. Uh, are not, then you may end up using fonts that are not going to display correctly. So basically, I mean, you've got a very limited selection, Arial, Helvetica, and I don't even know that Helvetica is truly web safe, Verdana, um, so most of the Microsoft mm -hmm. core fonts are going to be found on pretty much most systems. Uh, any other ones that you would go with? Um, Comic Sans no. MS. <laughs> Don't ever Never. do that. Even if it works, don't <laughs> do it. Font was created as a joke. I yeah. swear. <laughs> I'll bet you it was. It has MS at the end. <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> you and your fonts. Uh, okay, so I've got the text in there. We make great things happen. But what? Okay, so what we're talking about with web safe fonts? There, there's a something that can help us, and it's called the Google Font API. All links that we display in uh, in the show tonight are going to be available uh, in the show notes. Category 5.tv. This is episode number 186. And of course, it will also appear at cat5.tv slash webdev for the series. But there's the link for you. This is the Google Web Font API. This circumvents the limitation of the web font and gives us some truly awesome fonts to work with. You can see that uh, these fonts would definitely not be fonts that are considered web safe. But through Google's API, we're now able to utilize, <clears throat> utilize a lot of these fonts. 
any of these fonts that are listed here. Okay. Google.com slash web fonts is what I'm looking at right now. And you knew the name of that uh, of that font. Josephine Slab, I believe. There's Josephine Sands. Pretty sure there's two. Okay. Josephine Slab, look at you go. Good memory. When you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to click on that font. And you'll see there's a couple of things that you can do. You can launch it in the font previewer, which is a cool tool if you're just looking for that perfect font. You can enter your text up here. And you can actually then say, okay, I'm not too happy with that one. Let's try changing our font family to something else. And it is going to change it for you to one of these Google API fonts. In this case, we know that it's Joseph and Slab. So all we need to do is we don't need to download it. We don't need to do anything like that. We just go use this font. And you'll see that it's going to provide us with a couple of different things here. First of all, a header reference tag to a Josephine Slab style sheet. So all I've done is uh, triple clicked on that or highlighted it just with a drag operation. Copy that to my clipboard. And now back at my index.php, I'll paste that just below the existing style.css. There we go. So now we've got our style sheet, style.css being loaded, and then this Google API, Joseph and Slab style sheet as well. So now back at, uh, there's still one, one more thing that we need to do in order to utilize this font. And it shows here as an example, <laughs> placing it within the H1 tag. Now that's not necessary. And they're back. <laughs> that, my friends, was a serious Windows <laughs> crash. Welcome back. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to give it just a second to trickle <laughs> in and see if we've got stability. John, have you got any screen? No. Welcome back. And this is why we love Windows 7. Can I say that? Is that sarcasm? No, that. <laughs> wow. Welcome back, everybody. I see that people are starting to come around. There we go. OK, where do we leave off, chat room? Where did we lose you? Had we copied the style sheet to the header yet? Had we gotten there? OK, we got to the point where we copied the text, and then Windows crashed dramatically. <laughs> Too many fonts. Too many fonts. It heard that we were trying to bypass the font limitations. All right, let's, uh, let's pick it up as best we can where we left off. I'm going to undo a couple of things that I did there before we lost ourselves. OK. Google Font API, we understand now what that is. Uh, what we need to do is we need to get access to the style sheet that Google provides. I can do that by triple clicking here. We've, this is uh, the Joseph and Slab font that we're looking at. And this is a reference to the CSS file for that particular font in order to give us access to that as if it were an actual web safe font. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to tap into that. So with that, I'm going to go over to my index.php. And just below where I currently have my existing style sheet, I'm actually going to paste in that Google API style sheet for Joseph and Slab. Okay. Now, Google is, uh, by default, showing us that uh, here's what the font would look like in the CSS for an H1 tag. That is a header. And we don't necessarily have to include that in a header. It can be in a class or an ID, uh, wherever you want to put it. So what I'm going to do is, instead of copying that whole line, I'm just going to copy the CSS to get Joseph and Slab uh, on, my, uh, on my CSS. So go back to here. I'm going to bring up my style.css, and we're going to go to header, which already exists. And I'm going to paste that, because that's where we want it. Color, number FFF for white. I expect that was white, eh? 
I th yeah, I think so. Yes, wait. Okay. Good call. I am going to upload. Are you serious? Yeah, I was saying in the chat room there during <laughs> our second crash of the evening, this has never happened before. There's a first time for everything. We've had some crashes before, but yeah. what a weird <laughs> night. Next week, we're going to be talking about Windows 7 stability uh, on Category 5. We'll maybe skip I over a our feature topic. next week. Yeah, yeah you know, maybe we should break. talk about it this week. <laughs> we have maybe half an hour, 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes. I've lost all track because how much time have we lost due to system crashes? If you're watching this uh, in the RSS feeds and you're wondering why we keep stopping and all of a sudden talking about other things, it's... <laughs> I don't know. Oops. People in the chat room have theories that... It is uh, not my fault. Well, Windows 7 has some form <laughs> of... I don't know if it's a sensor or uh, some form of software that, that is able to detect a Mac mm. in, in its vicinity. Yeah, it shuts down. At a but then I would think it, it would be the other way around. Like Mac would have that that crashes Windows so that everyone who has a Mac can sit there and go, ah, mine didn't crash. How come yours always crashes when I come in, in, into the room? I don't... It's, I, hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> Other theories in the chat room is that Windows itself is a virus. Hmm. That makes sense. <laughs> John, my friend, do you have screen yet? Fantabulous. <laughs> have my work cut out for me this evening. Okay. Do we uh, do we brave it and hit the news? Ah, uh, it's good as time as any. Chat room and viewers, you are the best <laughs> for sticking it out with us tonight as we completely. You know what can you do when when meltdown. something goes? Yeah, meltdown. It's like, and and this is me angry <laughs> at Windows Seven. That's scary. Yeah, my ears are getting ready. <laughs> my ears are getting ready. Yeah, that's actually the heat of the lamps, John. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Becca, I will hand it over to you as we uh, sit here and talk amongst ourselves yeah. about uh, the joys of Windows chat room. Uh, let's let's have a little talk, shall we? <laughs> In the Category 5.tv newsroom, Canonical, the maker of Ubuntu, has announced that it is terminating the Ship It program, which sent free CDs of Ubuntu to those that asked. Canonical says that it has shipped millions of CDs to every country in the world, but it has been easing back the program over the last two years and limiting the number of CDs and applications for CDs per person. For Ubuntu 11.04, users will no longer be able to apply for a free CD. Canonical's Gary Carr said recently, Technology moves on. A CD distribution program, especially one of that size and delivered in that way, makes little sense. Carr is no doubt referring to the fact that Ubuntu is easily downloaded from their website, making traditional CD distribution a thing of the past and frankly an unnecessary but substantial expense. The program started in 2005 to address the lack of availability of high-speed internet. But since then, for many countries, faster internet connections have meant that ISO images of Ubuntu could be downloaded quickly and then burnt to CDR. So those who still want Canonical produced disk will find CD packs still available to purchase through the Canonical store. Ubuntu is still free and will remain freely downloadable from Ubuntu.com. Billionaire Richard Branson is well on his way to space. Now he plans to explore the deepest parts of the ocean as well. Branson announced his undersea exploration venture, Virgin Oceanic, last week, and unlike his suborbital spaceflight company, Virgin Galactic, the new venture is not accepting paying passengers. Instead, it will comprise only five deep sea dives, each one carrying just one person to the deepest points in each of the five oceans. To make the dives, Virgin has built a custom submarine. The sub's cockpit has a bubble-like dome made of uh, quartz, which can withstand 13 million pounds of pressure across its surface, and a life support system designed to allow for 24-hour dives. In addition to its one human, the sub will have a water sampling system that can filter microbes and viruses from the water for later study. 
it will also be able to deploy unmanned probes. Virgin has confirmed that scientists are in line to make the most of these dives for their research into bottom-dwelling microbes, bioluminescence, and seafloor geology. Today marks the 50th anniversary of the first human in space. On April 12, 1961, 27-year-old Soviet pilot and cosmonaut Yuri Gargarin completed an orbit of the Earth in his Vostok spacecraft. During the historic 108-minute flight of his Vostok 1 spacecraft, Gagarin passed over the Soviet Union and the Pacific, skimmed over the Straits of Magellan before crossing the Atlantic, Africa, and the Middle East. The mission nearly ended in disaster when the descent capsule and service module failed to separate cleanly due to a bundle of connecting cables which were burnt by the heat of reentry. To end the first space flight, Gagarin parachuted down in Russia's central Saratov region to be met by an amazed farm worker who offered the cosmonaut bread and milk. For more information about the flight, you can visit, uh, you can go to Wikipedia. And our quick link article, or quick link to the article is at cat5.tv slash first in space. What is meant to be a really cool feature of the modern camera and smartphone device is turning into a creepy and frightening way for stalkers to track the very movements and locations of people they stalk throughout the internet. Did you know that if your device supports geotagging, pictures you've emailed or uploaded from your smartphone could be leaking location information, threatening your safety or that of your children? NBC recently combed Twitter and sites like Facebook, Craigslist, and Photobucket. They found they could easily identify the home addresses and play areas of children whose pictures were posted by their parents. This hidden smartphone location information is saved with every picture you take. Police officer Mark Judic was able to, to use a freely available browser plugin to click on pictures of a four-year-old test subject. He not only found her home when he clicked on a picture which was taken in her bedroom, but also located her daycare, favorite fast food shop, and the specific part of the park where she plays. You can protect yourself and your family somewhat by removing these hidden tags from your existing photos using freely available software but it may also be an option to disable the location sharing features of your device. We'll include these a uh, few ideas in the show notes for episode 186, which will be available shortly after this broadcast at category5.tv. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash, with contributions this week by John Prieb. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, Email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks, Becca. This is Category5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online www.category5.tv. And this episode is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug, and also by Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Uh, we encourage you to, to click on our sponsors because we need to buy a new server. <laughs> a new broadcast <laughs> system or something. <laughs> what a night we have uh, had. We're going to get through this tutorial, people. You know what it is? It's the people who, uh, who aren't into the web dev stuff and they're like, oh, hmm. I'm going to hack into his server. That might be it. Crash him. No, I don't think it's that at all. I don't think it's that at all. <laughs> Do we uh, do we pick up where we left off? It's tough, eh? Because it's like, okay, well, how much do we keep losing every time that the uh, system crashed? But I think we can uh, I think we can pick up where we were. What do you th What do you think? I think that's probably a safe bet. Think that's good. I think that's good. All right. So we have imported the CSS, added that style sheet to the header area of our index.php. We've added a font family for Josephine Slab into our header ID mm -hmm. in the CSS file and we have uploaded those files. Now do we have success as far as getting that to to work? Now I was now there we go okay just as things were crashing mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what was you know because I'm trying to operate out. both computers uh, but now refreshing you'll see that the font has indeed changed to this fancy font it's very small so what we'll do is we'll get the uh, get an idea of, as to how large the uh, font should be. We're going to bring up our, our mock-up again. 
and this mock-up contains that font. It's got, it uh, looks like, three different sizes. So I'm just going to highlight with my square marquee there, rectangular select tool, and highlight the first line. And all I'm doing, see, I'm just copying that to my clipboard and then pasting it with edit, paste as, new image. And all that that does for, for me is shows me the uh, dimensions up here at the top, 52 pixels high. Okay, So now at my CSS, now I know that it's 52 pixels that I need the height of the font to be. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a couple of classes. We've never done that before. Uh, and uh, you know, for John, who's just finishing up school, and yourself, it's like classes are fun, right? Oh, no. So much fun. No, they're not so fun. Oh. But in CSS. <laughs> They can, they can They're a fun. party in CSS. A party. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a couple of classes around, within our ID. Now an ID is, okay, there is one of these on the page. It's called header. A class, on the other hand, is something uh, that can occur multiple times on a page. I could say, I could make a class that's called uh, white, and then that way it would force that font to be white because it would be color equal or color colon number FFF semicolon for that. Or I could go uh, class equals italic, and I could make it uh, italicize if I want. You know, why would you do that? But just to give you an idea, it's something that you can use multiple times. You could use it for uh, putting a border around things mm -hmm. or things like that. So you can understand all that. First of all, okay, so we're going to go span class equals, and this is going to be, uh, what do we call this? Big one. Okay? And that's the words we make. Okay, so we open and close that span. Then we need a carriage return, a line break, and another class here, class equals, quote, big two. Because this is... <laughs> A different size. Was it Great Things that's the next? Uh, uh, great Things. We make. Yeah, Great Things. things. Okay. And Happen is its own kind of thing. A span is uh, is uh, going to let us do this without breaking. It's it's like a, it operates kind of like a div, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't put a carriage return before or after, and it doesn't take up the entire width of the page. A span can be in the middle of a sentence and it's going to not break the sentence up. It's just going to apply style to that uh, to that section. So, Okay, so we're going to create another span around this one with a class of big three. Now remember, those are not going to do anything at the moment because we haven't specified any of these classes in our CSS mm -hmm. file. But we'll save those and now we're going to go to our CSS file, and I'm going to go ID, okay, the pound symbol, header, space, dot, class, all right, big one. So this is saying, if I am currently within the header ID and I have the class of big one, then do this, and I can put whatever in here I want. So font size, 52 picks. And now we're going to upload both of those files. Refresh our website. We have WeMake is the size that uh, you had previously specified. We can also specify different uh, measurements. We're using pixels because we want it to be I identical to, uh, to the mock-up. Mm -hmm. You could also use point, PT, uh, if you want to use the point size of the font. Uh, but here we're specifying an actual height uh, to that text. Similarly, let's grab the height of the next area of text uh, in our mockup. There we are. Same kind of thing that we're going to do. Doesn't have to be exact, to be honest with you. I'm going to go edit, copy, visible, edit, paste as new image. I'm using the GNU image manipulation program, which is a free piece of software, and uh, it's available for download for Windows, Mac, and Linux at gimp.org. This area, this span, big two, is what we called it. It's going to be 36 pixels high. Krista, you can uh, probably establish, just from what we've learned so far, exactly what that means. 
So Krista's already created the header ID and the big two span to class. I'm going to do the same thing. If you're following along at home, uh, that's what you'll want to do as well. What did we say? It was 30. Yes, I wrote 36, but they 36 may be wrong. Pixels. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing, and I've added 36 pixels to mine as well. Uh, we can confirm that back at our file if we want to. Okay, so uploading those. Uh, we just need our style.css file to be uploaded because we haven't changed index. Refresh. There we go. Okay. Now, are they. They're not all caps in the uh, mockup, are they? Are all caps. Are they small caps? Or are they, nope, they're they all, are caps. all caps. Okay, so we'll get we'll get to that as well. Okay, we're gonna grab happen for big three. Edit paste as new. Yeah, it ended up way down there. 61 pixels. Okay. So for this particular one, we're gonna go with this is big three. Our ID is header. Our class is big three. And we're going to go font, <laughs> if I can say it, <laughs> font size 61 picks. Krista's way ahead of me. And we're going to upload that. Here we go. Refresh. And there we have it. So next up, we want to make this all caps, but we've talked about it before, how we want to be able to do that in such a way that we're not actually screaming at the search engines mm -hmm. by placing all caps within the code of our, our website. Um, so we're going to use CSS to do that with the tra text transform property. And uh, all we need to do is go, now we've used it. I'm not sure if we used it for, if we used text transform for this particular I instance wanna before. I want to say we did. I think, I think we, we actually used it on our navigation. Oh, right, yes. That's right, so somewhere up. Yep, there it is. Text transform, colon, uppercase, under menu. Good call. So I'm going to copy that, okay? And we're going to go down here, and watch what we're going to do is we're going to actually stick that within. Now, here's something. Let's, let's learn something new. Let's, <laughs> we could add that to header, right? No problem. It will work if we put it in header, but let's get a little bit fancier than that because we know that each of these are going to fall in a span, so let's go. Well, we can do a few things. We can go header, span, Right? Like that. And now all spans that fall within header are going to have the text transformation uppercase. So that's one way we can do it. And that's probably the, well, beyond just placing it in header, that's uh, uh, you know, the least amount of typing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if we place it in header, in some cases, this is more appropriate because this is falling within a span. If I place this in header, then if I have any other text in header, then it's also going to become uppercased. In our case here, that's OK. So I can do that, and it's going to accomplish exactly the same thing. But in your case, perhaps that may not work, depending on if you have other text falling within that same ID. So I refresh, and it looks exactly the same. Looking back at our up here. So we need to establish an area here that is going to center our text. So we're going to say that it's going to be about that wide. So just to be real quick, I'm going to copy that and paste as new image. And this is, again, not to actually have an image of that, but just to have a measurement. And there are, you know, I can actually get that just by dragging my mouse, but depending on what application, this may be the easiest way. 525 pixels wide is what we're going to go with. So here, we're going to go, well, we're going to need to have a wrapper within header for our text area. So what we can do, well, let's do this. Let's go back to index.php, OK? And you're learning along with us. We're going to put a div right here. Uh, and we're going to call this. Um, header left with a capital L. And I'm just going to wrap my text within that. Okay? So it becomes a wrapper around that. So now we need to go back here. We need to update all these. Mm 
I'm just going to copy the word left, paste that after. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that that is going to allow us. So you see, we are within header, but we now have something called header left that is wrapping this particular block of text. <laughs> that was an awesome thing to have happen right there. Gang, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to cut our losses tonight. Aww. We've never had a show where it's like, where this has been the way it's been. John's just like, yeah, this has never happened before. I now have five times the amount of splicing to do <laughs> at the end of the night, and it's not going to come together into a full one-hour show. It's never happened before, but... Uh, I think we're going to pick up our series uh, where we left off there uh, next week. I think this is the best thing to do, and we're going to take some time this weekend and try to get to the bottom of what's going on here as far as whether it be a Windows update or what has happened here. But uh, never been quite like that. So are you Mac shopping this weekend? Is no. that what you're saying? <laughs> Mac so I can is go with so, you. It's so expensive for what you get, <laughs> plain and simple. What do you mean for what you get? For what you get. You can do more with a PC well, for the same price. <laughs> If I were to price out apples to apples and say, okay, oh, this is the price of the Mac. No pun intended. <laughs> well, I think what people... No, stop. <laughs> what people run the risk of with the Mac is they say, oh, these are so good. But, okay, so you pay the premium for that good. But if you if you so pay good. this... if you Right. But they're comparing it to a computer, for example, like say my laptop versus your laptop. Your laptop, 2500 bucks. My laptop, 400 bucks. So if I'm to compare those two together, how could I possibly have an accurate representation of Apple's two PCs? It's not an accurate representation, right? If I were to go out and buy a $2,500 PC laptop, it would blow your mind. I'm serious. How many times did it crash? Tonight? Well, that was... That's Three. Windows 7. That was at least 10 times or 100 <laughs> times or something. I lost track. Guys, help us out this week. Make us viral by going to cat5.tv slash Tuesday. Not Monday. Tuesday. Definitely not Wednesday. No. But Tuesday. cat5.tv slash Tuesday. Tweet it. Like it. Wear your cardigans. Put on a cardigan just to... That's a good idea. Everybody. We should have, like, International Cardigan Day It'll every Tuesday night. The new thing. Night. The new fad. I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Hmm. I expect you all to be wearing <laughs> cardigans next week, even if they zip up. My only like, cardigan zips yeah. up. She's like, that's not a cardigan. Well, like, no. Wikipedia, Wikipedia says Wikipedia it is. Wikipedia said it was. I was proven wrong. Yeah. I was incorrect. I'm afraid to touch anything now because it's like, okay, well, we're re technically we're out of time. I know that the show we'll is not... We'll just have to let it run just continuously. Yeah, until it crashes just in, in about four minutes. Yeah. Sorry, gang. Thanks, everybody, for being with us and sticking it out. we got to be of good spirits when something like this happens, but the nature of live broadcasting is sometimes you don't know and sometimes, you know, if something like this happens, there's really nothing we can do because we're live and... Uh, we're just going to have to try to figure it out this week and hope that uh, we can have the problem solved for, uh, for, for next week. But if you help us go viral, I, I said to Krista, you know, this thing could have millions of views. Or thousands. Or thousands of millions. I like the way you think. I like the way you think. Oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> if, if, if that happens... Prove me wrong. Go viral. Then we, could, then we could buy a, a new Windows Mac. free... You know, a Mac wouldn't be a bad idea because at least then it, Wirecast works on a Mac. Well, there you go. So See? I'd consider that <laughs> if we had a thousand oh. million views. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, I hope you have a fantastic week. Krista, thanks for sticking it out. I know this has been a, a rough night because of the crashing it's and stuff. It's been horrible. I no, know. it's been great. It's been I, fun. She's, she's reasonably new it's here, fun. and so I have to say, you know, this is not the norm. Understand, this is not how it normally goes down. I don't if know. you're new here, this is not the norm. This is not how it normally goes down. <laughs> well, I think she knows that much. Yeah. I hope you know that. Thanks for being here. It's still been fun, and, and uh, I know that we have learned 
in a very staccato way tonight. Yes. Um, but uh, hopefully somewhere in there we're able to piece it together in uh, post-production and turn this mm -hmm. into something. And the uh, intro made it better. The intro so was good. all we had for going it. for us and tonight. And people like it. Maybe that should be the perm <laughs> oh intro. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash Tuesday. And we'll see you next Tuesday. See ya. Take care. <laughs>